Today, I encourage you to be the one. Be the one to show the world how fucking free life truly is. Because honestly, if, like Gandhi says, be the change that we want to see in the world. What if we listened louder, lingered longer, held space for others more often, didn't operate so rushed every single day because you know what? The things that we're so worried about today, those little things that are upsetting you, often those things we fill our days with and that's not even the shit that matters. So in this episode, I encourage you to be the one. Will you join me? Welcome to the Permission Slip Podcast, where I, empowerment coach, mindset expert, and holistic nutritionist, Carmen Oling, share with you the tools, conversations, and resources you need to write your own permission slip, take massive action, and become obsessed with your own life. Let's get started. We're going to dive right in today. This episode is being recorded real time after the most recent tragic event in our nation, the school, elementary school shooting in Texas. And I feel like this is happening so often that even myself, I'm a culprit of this, we're becoming so emotionally unavailable and unattached to these horrific things that are happening. And so this morning I sat and thought and prayed in my meditation. Then I went on my God walk, which I've been doing these God walks, which is basically a walk for whatever duration feels good, feels in flow. And I either listen to nothing and I'm just in nature I listen to a sermon or I listen to music without, so instrumental music. And I just talk to God on the walks. And I asked for guidance around what is something that I can do that we could all do as a collective today that would make a difference. And in my walk, I didn't really get a lot, but I just said, just show me, you know, show me, use me, guide me, speak through me. So I started thinking about it and I started, my energy was really low. I didn't want to go to the gym. I didn't want to do all of these things. I was like, wow, this is really affecting me. And this is really affecting all of us. Not only the families that this has happened so tragically to, the thousands of families and the increase of this happening. But what can we do as a collective? Like how can we start today doing something? And I was texting with Joel and telling him how I was feeling and asking how he was doing today. And then the quote from Gandhi came up and that quote is, Be the change you want to see in the world. Then I instantly got this hit of be the one. If you've heard me speak or even on this podcast, I often say, be the one. I want you to design a life that feels so good to you where you're letting go of all the shoulds and need to and comparison and judgment and worry and fear. And you're designing this life that feels good to you. And I encourage you to be the one to show the world how good life truly is. And you might be thinking, like, why are you saying that now? This is such a tragedy. But what if more of us as a collective came together in this energy of loving life, 
of not being in judgment and comparison of each other and ourselves, having less fear and anxiety, having less time to stress and be overwhelmed. Because guess what? Right now, I want you to think about the things that you're most stressed about every single day. And guess what? Those are the things that don't even fucking matter. Think about it. And I'm not immune to this either, even though I coach on this all the time. Sometimes we just get wrapped up in our lives and the things that are going on. So be the one to show the world how great life truly is. You're going to uplift yourself. And when you uplift yourself, you uplift others around you. And when others are uplifted, then it's like a fucking ripple effect and they uplift others as well. And so when I got this little nudge, I thought I should just record this on the podcast. This could be a catalyst and a platform that I can use in order to encourage all of you to start doing this as a collective. So we could start healing individually as our families, as our communities, and as our nation. So I thought, what are some key things? Like, what what examples can I give? So I sat down with my journal. Yep, I'm always talking about journaling. Sat down with my journal, and I wrote out a list of things that came up that I do in my life and some new things, too. And I want to share those with you as an example. The first thing is to have an intention each day to create white space. What white space is, it's time in your day where you're not like back to back to back to back. You're building your day that feels good to you based on the energy that you have available, not the number of hours in the day. So you're not scheduling a meeting at one, one to two, and then two to three, and then three to four. That's an energy of control and lack and pushing and forcing. What if you did a meeting from one to two and then you had an hour off and then you had a meeting from three to four or whatever that might look for you because then you have that white space. You're not going to be rushing. And in those spaces of white space is when you can actually take the time to connect with others around you. Because we have to let go of this idea of social isolation and self-isolation. Self-isolating affects three out of four women today. And the pandemic didn't make it any worse, especially the ones that, like us, that are going after our goals. When something challenging comes up, we go inward. We work harder. We do more. We're going to figure it out. We just slap a positive affirmation on it instead of reach, reaching out to somebody and talking about it. And it builds more fear, anxiety, judgment, and comparison because then we hop on social media and then we see what someone else is doing. Although guess what? They're fucking struggling in the background too. They're just not talking about it. And we think we should be doing more. We should be doing that. Joel said earlier this morning, fuck it. Let's just delete all social media. How would that change things? Someone, I want you to look up and see if there's a fact, send me a DM if you can find it. Like if you're a good researcher, is there a fact that the rise in social media usage, like also trends with the rise in these like mass tragedies? Just curious. So when you have the white space, you can actually connect meaningfully because loneliness is, is huge right now. And guess what? You can be lonely and be surrounded by people. Almost 50% of Americans say that they feel lonely often, some of the time or most of the time. And it's primarily because they're not having deep, meaningful relationships. We're so consumed by the shit that doesn't matter. What would it be like if you had this white space when you went outside or you went to do an errand? You could actually make eye contact with someone. You could smile. 
And if they asked you how your day was or you asked them, you can actually stop to listen and answer honestly. I will forever, this is forever cemented in my mind. Let me give you an example of what happens most of the time. So I used to go to this Fred Meyer all the time. And before the U scans, so Fred Meyer is a Kroger brand um, in like the Northwest. And before the U scans or self checkout, I would find that if I was going in quickly to get something quickly, and I, I love this Fred Meyer, by the way, if you want to go to it and you go to Oregon, it's in Albany, Oregon, it is like the best absolute store. But I would check out at the deli because no one was at the deli. Again, I'm probably rushed, but whatever. I I wanted to see how people, I always want to see how people respond or like say goodbye or say thank you. And so there was this one person, I do remember her name, but I'm not going to say it. And she would say the exact same thing every single time. I probably checked out with her at least 50 times maybe double that. And she would say it like this. Thank you and have a nice day. And while it was nice, I don't think she was really paying attention to what she was saying. And when we go back to that idea of we can still be around people and be lonely, that's a great example. But what if we took the time to actually have meaningful conversations? This is something I do on my walks saying hi and and good morning. I know it's something that I always have seen my mom do. And Joel always says good morning to people on our walks. And if someone actually engages and asks me how I'm doing or have a great day or asks me a question, guess what? I stop to talk to them. No matter if they, no matter what they look like, No matter if it's someone living on the street or an affluent person, I want to hear from them. So creating that white space, making eye contact. We don't have to wear the mask anymore. Smile at people. You never know. That could be the only time during someone's day when they got a smile, they got eye contact, and someone actually asked how they were doing and listened to them. Because as humans, we all want to feel safe. We all want to feel secure and soothed, and we all want to be seen. A few other things that I wrote down was letting go of the constant consumption. We are constantly consuming. And even though you might think that it's a positive thing, like a podcast for personal growth um, or looking at someone's Instagram that's you know motivating to you, it really builds in our subconscious that anxiety, that judgment, that comparison. So if we can stop consuming as much as we consume, and let me tell you, the news is just all fear-based. We need to stop watching the news. I want to know what's going on, but they're being paid to perpetuate fear. And even if you don't think it's affecting you, it's affecting your, you subconsciously. So what do we want to seek? We don't want to just seek knowledge because that's just putting more shit in our brain. We want to seek wisdom. Wisdom is the application of knowledge. The application of knowledge means that you learn something and then you take action on it. We are all here as a collective to help one another. People need people. It's time we all start listening to that voice inside of us, that inner knowing to the nudges that God is putting on your heart and taking action on them and start living a life that feels good to you. Not one that just fucking looks good on the outside. So that's what I have for you today. Be the one. Be the one to show the world 
how great life truly is. Show kindness. Linger longer. Listen louder. Make eye contact. Smile. Don't be so fucking rushed all the time. Create white space in your day. And please connect with humans. People need people. Okay, friends, I want to hear from you on this. What do you think about this topic? Are you excited about diving into being the one, figuring out what your deepest priorities, making sure that your life feels good to you? It's not, you're just not building it based on how it looks on the outside. So you can show others and illuminate that authentic light that you have inside of you. And so when you are around other people that they feel illuminated as well, and together as a collective, we can start feeling good and taking the actions that we need to take to be united, to make the changes that we want to see individually in our families, in our communities, and in our nation. It starts with this. And I want to hear from you. What are some of your ideas on how you can be the one? So tag me on your Instagram stories at Carmen Olin, and I will just be resharing them all day long, all week long. Whenever you listen to this podcast, it's so important. I will always reshare it because other people need to hear together. Coming together as a collective is what we need most right now. And I'll just end again with Gandhi's quote. Be the change you want to see in the world.